Who has the most to prove for Maryland football? You are Locked On Turks, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. What players on Maryland football have the most to prove this year, I think there are many different players on the – I'm going to focus on the offensive side of the ball today. I'll focus on the defensive side of the ball on another day. But I'm going to give you a couple of my top players that I think have the most to prove going into the 2024 season. I think this is a huge season for Maryland football overall. It's the first year without Talia in a while. And let's see how good this program is. Is actually built up. Was it more the quarterback? Was it more the coach? We're going to see how and where our program is and how good we actually are this next year. I think it's an extremely important year for the Terps success going into the next five, six, seven, eight years of Maryland football and under the era of Coach Loxley. So it's going to be interesting to see, but I think there are plenty of players that have a lot to prove this year. We lost we lost some guys for sure. We lost some players definitely from last year's team, and we are probably weaker in spots. Maybe we're better in some spots. Some guys might have to step up, but I think there are a couple players that I think have a good amount to prove going into next year. And I think it all starts with that quarterback room. You could really say all three guys have a lot to to prove going into next year. But let me start with Billy Edwards. It's interesting with Billy. I don't know if he wins the quarterback battle, but I think he's definitely got a shot. He's not my personal pick for Maryland football for the quarterback position for us because I don't think he really fits what we do well. I think we throw the ball around and spread it out, and our wide receiver room is kind of the strength. But he could potentially be the starter. But with him, it's more about the run game. But him and Cameron Edge, you could argue for the same reason that I'm about to make, have a lot to prove. Maryland and Coach Loxley and the offensive staff decided to bring in MJ Morris from NC State. So that means not only do they have stuff to prove in terms of to me and the fans, they have stuff to prove to Coach Loxley. They have to prove to Coach Loxley and the Maryland staff that they can actually be the guy. It goes for both Cameron Edge and Billy Edwards because if you feel like you have the guy that is backing him up, you're not going to you're not going to – that backed up Talia last year that you feel like could be the future of Maryland football. You're not going to bring in a guy like MJ Morse. You're going to stick with the QB room you have and continue to recruit younger guys and guys out of high school, but you're not going to bring in a guy like that that a lot of people think are going is going to be the favorite for the quarterback position going into next year in MJ Morse. So I think that's a lot of pressure. You have pressure in the fact that they brought in a guy to compete with you and a guy that – a lot of people think you're going to be a starter, a guy that's really talented overall, and that means they didn't have complete trust as you to be the starter. So I think that's a lot of pressure on Billy Edwards and Cameron Edge. Both, not only do they have pressure to compete for the job, but just because we brought in another guy as well, and also just taking over for Talia, and that goes for MJ Morris too. So I think there's a ton of pressure in the quarterback room, but there's always going to be pressure in the quarterback room. So I think those three might have the most to prove out of anybody on the offensive side of the ball. We'll see overall. We'll continue to talk about that quarterback controversy. Roman Hemby, I think, is definitely up there for a lot to prove on. Roman Hemby is a really talented player, a really good running back. I said he should be in our top five in terms of EA, um, the Madden, or not the Madden game, the college football 25 game that's coming out that everyone's super excited about and that Arch Manning decided to opt out of, which is a separate conversation. I didn't really understand why Arch Manning opted out. He said it was a distraction. It's like, you're, you're not playing the game. You don't have to play the game. You can just play football. You don't need to be on the game. But I don't know. That's besides the point. Overall, in the new college football game, I said Roman Hemi should be in our top five. 
players overall. But if you look at last year's performance, it wasn't that good from Roman Hemi. It was a down year for sure. After what he did two years ago in his first year as a starter and with the talent that he showed in his first year as a starter as a redshirt freshman, it was just – it was a down year after – that in terms of last year, I don't know if you want to blame it on the offensive line. I don't know what you want to blame it on, but look at the numbers compared to 2022 and 2023. Last year, he averaged 4.8 yards per carry, 680 yards overall, and four touchdowns compared to 2022, where he had 989 yards, a 5.3 average, and 10 touchdowns. So that is six touchdowns less. That is 0.5 in average per carry, which is a big deal, more than you would probably think. And that is a huge discrepancy in yards overall and about 300 more yards in 2022. That, that's a big difference overall. That's a huge difference in between those two years for Roman Hemby. And so I'm looking at Roman Hemby and I'm saying, you got a lot to prove because we saw a guy that was – going to be a surefire, one of the best running backs in the Big Ten. And then last year we saw a guy that was like, you're just solid. And you're you're. we saw the flashes of what he was a couple of years ago, but we never got that full taste. And we expected him to get better. I was like, oh, for sure he'll be a 1,000-yard rusher, for sure. And part of that is Maryland loves to rotate different guys and play different people in that room. And there's a lot of different guys getting carries. But – it's still like Roman Hemby was getting the majority of them. He was still the starter overall, and you would just expect a little bit more from him, and you wouldn't expect the production to jump down that much. So I think with having a down year last year after what he did two years ago, I think Roman Hemby has a lot to prove on the offensive side of the ball for the Maryland Terrapins overall. I'll be talking more about that run game in the next segment, so make sure you stick around. My next player is kind of interesting. Octavian Smith, receiver. If you guys aren't familiar with Octavian Smith, he's going to be a junior. He's a sophomore right now, but he will be a junior by the time next year rolls around. And Octavian Smith is interesting. He's an interesting player. I think he's got the one thing that you can't teach. He's got speed, which he's really dynamic athlete overall. So he can do some things and he can hit a gear that, the rest of the players just can't really hit. And they're saying Ty Felton's the fastest on the team. Octavian Smith has to be up there for one of the fastest on the team. If, he, if it's not him, I guess, like, you, if it's not Ty Felton, it's definitely Octavian Smith. I don't know, but it seems like everyone's saying Ty Felton and when they talk about the ratings for the uh, college football game. But it's like Octavian Smith, I've seen him run overall, and he, he's definitely one of our best athletes. But now it looks like he should project as our number three wide receiver. I don't know if he fits in that slot type that we kind of want right now with Jason Jones gone and you got Caden Prather on the outside and you got Ty Felton on the outside as well. So I don't know if you put him in the slot exactly, but he projects as our third wide receiver. And you know Maryland loves to chuck it around and – he hasn't done a ton in his Maryland career. He's been there and done some big things and some big moments where you're like, oh, wow, he has a ton of talent when he had 22 receptions. He had 22 receptions for 209 yards. He gets involved, and that makes sense because he hasn't had to be the guy. We've had a ton of players in that room overall, so it's never like we've had to rely on him, and he's been young as well. He's only been a freshman and sophomore, but he's always been getting snaps. He's always – seems to be a guy that they want to find a way to get the ball to. And so he's a guy where I'm like, there's a lot of pressure on him. It seems like the receivers have stepped up every single year for Maryland football for these last couple of years. When I think about Ty Felton stepping up, I think about Caden Prather transferring in and stepping up. I think the guys just keep kind of stepping up and Octavian Smith looks like the next guy that has stuff to prove that looks like he needs to step up for Maryland football to continue that success in that wide receiver room. And then the next guy, the last guy I'm going to talk about is Preston Howard. Preston Howard has a lot to prove this year. Preston Howard, I think, is uber talented, like very talented, has 
all the kind of stuff and attributes you want in a tight end. And I, I think he has a shot to do some really good things for Maryland football next year. And he's tight end one now. He was more tight end two last year. Sometimes they kind of it seemed like they kind of made him a blocker, but he showed that he can be a receiving threat. But he is tight end one this year, and we're going to need him to be big in that tight end room because we like to use our tight ends. We like running a lot of two tight end sets, so we might do even more of that next year depending on who our quarterback is and all that kind of stuff. We might run more of that type of stuff. So I'm looking at I'm looking at Preston Howard under a lot of pressure because he hasn't been the starter yet. He hasn't he hasn't gotten quite that load overall until the bowl game where he had a touchdown in the Music City Bowl game and he looked really good. We've seen him make really crazy catches, but now you're the guy and you have to prove that you can be elite in the Big Ten, but you have the size, you have the traits, you have everything that you that I think the Maryland staff wants and that anybody wants, and I think he has the potential to be an NFL player because of that, but he still has a lot to prove on going into next year. Maryland's run game will have to be so much better next year. I will tell you about why that is and about Maryland's run game going into next year after this ad from the Game Time app. Have you ever wanted to go to a game at the last minute, like a Maryland Terrapins game, but finding tickets is hard? I have been there before. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is a fast, easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. I love the Game Time app. It's so easy to use, and there's such great deals on the app, and a lot of people use phones nowadays, and I think it's great modern technology, so make sure you download the Game Time app. It has killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guaranteed. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game Time has Deals on the tickets right up to the start of the game or the event, which I absolutely love because I'm a little bit of a last minute person sometimes and have to wait till the last second to put in the tickets or before I decide to go. And even an hour after it starts, they still have tickets available. It's a place to find last minute seats. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first. Purchase terms apply. Again, create an account or redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Maryland's run game has a ton to prove on going into next year, and it has to be so much better. Our run game last year was bottom of the Big Ten. I didn't like our run game last year. I continue to say it every single week. I was like, I wish we would run the ball a little bit more. I wish we would stick to it a little bit more. And part of me understood why we did it. It was like, we're not running the ball well. We're not doing a good job running the ball. And the averages are low. And we can't really get it going in a lot of spots. But we just didn't go to it enough, in my opinion. And I wish Gaddis would fix that a little bit because I felt like If we did run the ball more and took some of the pressure off Talia, we were going to be in a good spot. But I also understand you don't want to take the ball out of Talia's hands. It makes sense. One of the best Maryland quarterbacks of all time has all the passing records that you could imagine at Maryland football. But guess what? Talia is gone now. And so I'm looking at these quarterbacks and I'm saying, I don't know how, I have no, like, honestly, I have no idea how these guys are going to perform. I have no idea who's going to win the quarterback battle. I really think it's a three-way battle. I don't think it's like one guy is locked in. I really think anybody can win the battle, but I'm looking at this and I'm like, the run game next year has to, has to, has to be better or else we're not going to be successful. We're not going to be a very good team unless the run game improves next year that's just the way it is that's the way I think it is I don't think we're good enough as a team to ignore the run game I don't think we're good enough to just lead the Big Ten in passing attempts and be like oh that's going to work I don't think that'll work next 
year overall. And we don't play quite the dominant teams up front. I don't think Oregon is a dominant up front on the defensive line as Ohio State or Penn State or um, Ohio State or Michigan, excuse me. We do play Penn State. They're pretty good up front, but they lost some guys up front as well. And I don't think USC is nearly as good up front. So I, I think you play, you don't play the two teams that I'm yeah, it's scary and really hard to run the ball against in Ohio State and Michigan. Of course, Penn State is challenging as well. But you get Oregon, who I think is good up front, but I don't think they're great up front like a USC, like – excuse me, not like USC, like like um, Michigan and Ohio State like I talked about. And then you also get USC, which I think you could run the ball in USC, to be quite frank. But if Billy Edwards is that quarterback – we are going to be a running team. And I don't think, in my personal opinion, I don't think Billy Edwards is a quarterback for us because I don't think he fits what we want to do overall. And I think he has a lot of value because I think he can come in in certain packages and run QB power and QB draw and run sneaks on third and ones and fourth and ones and get those. But if he's a starter, it's going to be heavy reliant on the run game. And if we can't run the ball, we're not going to win football games. We're just not. We're not going to be a very good team overall if this Maryland team isn't able to run the ball effectively with Bill, especially with Billy Edwards, because his strength is running the ball and he should open up the run game for Roman Hemby and Colby McDonald and maybe Deshaun Williams get some time as a freshman. I think he's a really good player. I won't be surprised if they mix him in overall. But if it's Morris, MJ Morris or Cameron Edge. We'll still need a run game, at least somewhat. It doesn't have to be quite Michigan level last year with Blake Corum and Edwards. It doesn't have to be quite on that level or Penn State level with Singleton and Allen. That's not what I'm asking for. I'm just asking for some sort of balance with a quarterback that's going to be pretty inexperienced. MJ Morris has the most experience out of that group, and he's not even super experienced overall. He's just played really well in spots and when he's gotten his chance overall. And his situation has been kind of weird with his playing time and him trying not to waste his red shirt and all these different things overall. But we're going to need the run game to be a lot better. I talked about the down year that Roman Hemby had before where I'll read it again for you guys just to emphasize the point where last year he averaged 4.8 yards per carry, 680 yards and four touchdowns. Compared to in 2022, 989 yards, 5.3 average, and 10 touchdowns. And so that was really down year. And then also Antoine Littleton last year wasn't very good, I thought, overall. I thought it was a pretty bad year for Antoine Littleton, who had 69 carries for 256 yards and 3.7 average, compared to the year before that where he averaged 5.0 yards per carry. But Antoine Littleton is gone. He's, he hit the portal, and he has since transferred. So he's gone in the running back room, and I'm looking at – now, I love Coley McDonald, and I love Roman Hemby in there. I think they're both explosive. I think they both can get a lot done. Coley McDonald was top of the Big Ten in average yards per carry for a while, and, and in the country he was, like, top ten for a while. He was averaging over seven yards per carry. I like Coley McDonald a lot to get carries, but I'm still looking at this Maryland run game, and I'm saying to myself, it has to find a way to hit – another gear because we cannot lead the Big Ten in passing attempts. I think you have to take on a whole different style. I think first down has to be a lot about running overall because we could have struggles in the quarterback room. I think it's pretty fair to say that it's going to be a struggle. And even when Talia was playing, it was like, I don't know about how much we're throwing the ball because he's throwing a lot of interceptions. He's trying to make plays. He feels like it's on himself to make the play. And if we have to get into that type of thing with our current quarterback room, it feels like it'll go even worse. So Maryland run game has to be better going into next year. Maryland loses a key part of their coaching staff, an underrated loss that I feel like more people should be talking about. I will tell you about that after this ad from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy and is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts 
for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Maryland football just lost a huge part of their coaching staff, which I don't think is talked about enough. Maryland receiver coach, Coach Brewer, has decided to leave the program and take on a different position for Virginia Tech football. He's going to be doing some stuff. I think it's more like with recruiting and high school stuff overall for Virginia Tech football. Maybe he wanted to get out of the just the on the field coaching stuff i want to do more of the recruiting side of things which i mean i'm no one to judge I'm not saying one or the other is better overall if that's what he wanted to do then that's what he wanted to do it kind of sucks that we lost him to a a team that we compete in recruiting and all that kind of stuff but i really loved coach Pruer. he was maybe my favorite coach on this staff just because I always would follow his Twitter and how much he was supporting his guys and taking pictures with the receiver room. But I also loved him because he was producing as a coach. The Maryland receiver room, it felt like over the past couple of years that he's been here, over these past two years that he's been there, has been a really good unit. And it's been probably our best unit on the team overall. I mean, over these past couple of years, maybe you can say our quarterback with to Leah, but I thought he was doing an elite job developing guys, putting guys in the right spot, having the right attitude around things. I just love Coach Brewer's energy. I actually emailed him once, and he also got back to me about doing an interview, but now he's off to Virginia Tech, so I can't really do that anymore. I love that he answered my email overall. I just I liked Coach Brewer. I thought he was kind of perfect for this Maryland football team and how he developed players overall. And over the past two years, Maryland football, their receivers have led the Big Ten Conference in receiving yards. It's not Ohio State. It's actually us. Maybe Ohio State has better guys in the NFL, but that's the thing. Coach Brewer isn't working with five-star guys or really highly ranked four-star guys. Sure, we get a couple of those four-star type of players, but he hasn't worked with a ton of those guys. He's really developing these guys that are coming into College Park as good players, don't get me wrong, talented players, but they're not your highly and number one receiver in the class of 2022 or five-star here like Ohio State will get or those type of guys and he's developing them into really good Big Ten players. My favorite one that I like to talk about is Ty Felton. Ty Felton, the steady improvement from year to year from freshman year to sophomore year and then sophomore year to what I saw him do last year. I thought Ty Felton now has a chance to go to the NFL. I think Ty Felton now has a good chance to be one of the best receivers in the Big Ten next year. I think he has a chance to be a 1,000-yard receiver next year, even if we get the quarterback spot right. I think he has a chance to be maybe second team all Big Ten next year with some of the with Ohio State losing Marvin Harrison and some of the other stuff that goes on. I mean, there's a ton of good receivers in the Big Ten, especially with adding Oregon and those players, um, USC as well. Oregon has a really good player in Evan Stewart, and the, who they got from Texas a and But that's not really my point. I love how he's developed Ty Fallon. Ty Fallon was one of the better receivers in the Big Ten last year, and he's developed other guys. He's put Jayshon Jones in the right spot after Jayshon Jones has been really injured, has tearing his ACL at Maryland, and Jayshon Jones was able to come back. I love the work that Coach Brewer has put in for this Maryland football team. He was just active on social media as well, which isn't a good thing or a bad thing, but it was just nice. You could, I could really see the kind of the tangible evidence of the work that he was doing. And now we're going to have to see, will Maryland still have the same success with a new different receiver coach or somebody else taking over that room? And I don't really expect it to be a big drop off or anything like that. I still expect us to produce really good receiver talent and, can, and it continue to be on a high level overall, but it'll be interesting to see who takes over that room, who kind of steps up and who still develops or do guys maybe not develop as quickly 
do the does the room not play as well? I mean, it's a possibility. I don't know how how much influence quite the receiver coach has on the receivers. I know he works with them closely, but I don't know how much of a difference he makes, but I know he was making a difference for sure in that room. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Lock on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Lock on Terps.